What is good, guys? Welcome to the first ever episode of my podcast. I don't even know if this shit's working correctly. I don't know if this mic's working. I don't know if the fucking camera's working. I don't know if anything's working. I got $20 lights at Home Depot and put them up behind this camera, and I think they're doing good. I was looking on Amazon. You know, professional lights were like 300, 400 bucks. They were gonna take seven days to arrive. So I just got my ass in my car, drove to Home Depot, got these fucking lights for $20. I think it looks good, you know? There's only so much you can do to make this look good, but you know, I think it, it looks okay. Um, so yeah, you know, starting a podcast, midlife crisis. I feel like our previous generations, like the boomers and stuff, their midlife crisis was like buying sports cars and shit. We don't have enough money for that. Our midlife crisis, literally the millennial midlife crisis for men is growing this exact mustache mullet look and starting a podcast. So yeah, I'm pretty much on brand with that right now. Um, but I'm calling it redacted, okay? Redacted. Um, for those that don't know is when you redact something in like a secret official document It's like when they go back and like edit shit out But it's also slang for something else that sounds like redacted which I found pretty funny um, And yeah, you know, I'm, I'm a pretty redacted guy sometimes so I just think it's a chaotic funny name for the podcast So fuck it. I'm going with it. Of course the guy is lawn mowing right outside the window This dude never fucking cuts the grass the second I start this podcast Fire up the lawnmower, he's starting, oh, honey, he's starting the podcast, the weird guy with the with the hand tattoo, get the fucking lawnmower, Jesus Christ, dude, okay, whatever, it'll be fine, that's why I got this professional microphone right here, <laughs> so yeah, um, pretty much what I plan to do with this podcast is, I don't think I want to have any guests to start, I want to just kind of schizo, you know, one take it, like Tim Dillon style, um, and I'm just gonna go for it. I don't really like having to edit and like think about stuff, planning guests, scheduling. That seems like a nightmare to me, having to plan a guest and be like, what what time do you think? I, I'm free Thursday and Tuesday at this time, Eastern and this time, Eastern, da da da. And then they come back and then you come back. It's like, by the time you fucking set up the podcast, you could have recorded 20 podcasts by yourself. So I will probably have guests at some point. I do have a lot of cool friends that I wanna get on this and people that you guys might know, creators and things like that from either soccer or the NFT world that I do think would be really fun to interview or to get, you know, to sit next to me here and just kind of have a chat. But uh, for right now, I'm just gonna fucking YOLO it by myself. Um, so yeah, I was asking people on Twitter if they preferred this angle or the side angle. It got literally like 50-50. Everyone was like, number one, number one, that's, number two, that's way better. Do it straight on. And then people were like, no, I feel like you're gonna sell me car insurance when, when you look at it this way. I'm like, ah. I don't know, I don't know. I feel like this way is the way to go. Uh, for now, maybe I'll change the angles, but um, I'm shooting this whole thing on an iPhone. I'm just doing this super like ghetto. I'm not fucking spending a bunch of money on production or anything like that. Let's see what happens. You know, if I make a few bucks, maybe I'll upgrade the, the set. <laughs> the set is just fucking room in my apartment. Um, but yeah, guys, I'm at a crossroad. I have some notes right here. I have a couple of loose notes, what I wanna talk about. I'm prepared. Um, and you know, I'm gonna just fucking go through them and just talk shit and we'll just see where it goes, all right? So yeah, what I plan to do with the podcast, that's pretty much what I just told you guys. Just gonna one take it. I feel like you need to do things that are sustainable. I used to do, when I was younger, I used to kind of really get hyped up on projects and start doing them. And then after like two, three weeks, I'm a Gemini, right? So I have a short attention span. So when I would, have to keep doing them continuously, I would get so drained that I just didn't want to do it. So for this, I'm like, I'm going to do it in the most easy way where I don't have any edits. I don't do multiple takes. I don't do multiple camera angles. I could do all that. I know how to do it and I know how to edit it and set up all the cameras and shit, but I just, it's going to be too much work. To me, I just want to one take everything, one angle. And that means that I'll never get tired of doing this. I could just do it like boom, 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 boom. And um, yeah, that kind of shit drains me. Like I like doing the creating part, but then afterwards, all the like matching up all the camera angles and the sound and all. I know there's like good AI shit uh, to do that these days, but still, I'm just do it like this. Um, but yeah, I've been feeling at like a crossroads recently because, you know, for those that know me for a while back, you know, my main thing, uh, my main career was being a soccer influencer, I'll have you know. Um, so <laughs> my main thing since, you know, I was, I'm, I'm 32 now, I'm getting fucking old, bro. But um, since I was like 18, 19, was just doing freestyle soccer. And so if you guys don't know what that is, just doing all those crazy tricks with the soccer ball and everything. And I was, you know, one of the better sort of 
freestyle soccer players in the world at one point. <laughs> hard, hard to believe, I know. But, um, you know, I was always competing at the world finals and, you know, basically competing at international level, flying all over the fucking world, doing all these Red Bull tournaments and everything. And I've been doing that for a long time. Then when social media started popping off, I was like one of the first, uh, not one of the first, but that kind of, you know, early person in the soccer world, just like going viral with like, you know, random clips. I would just go on the street. I lived in New York, so I would just go in the middle of Manhattan, fucking like smash a ball off like a 50 foot skyscraper and just like take a touch back off the skyscraper and then smack it back again, playing like two touch with a skyscraper, just like, you know, kicking fucking soccer balls into the Hudson, doing crazy tricks, like, you know, running into random, like crazy people in the street in New York and just like doing interactive shit with them or just like prank stuff. Um, and yeah, I just went mega viral doing that. That was about, I would say 2018. I started going like really viral. I probably went from like 50, I went from like 30 or 40,000 followers on Instagram to half a million in the space of like a year. It was fucking wild, bro. I lost like 200K followers since then because I just kind of went, went ghost. Um, and cause I'm so ugly, but that's the, not the main point. Main point is that I just stopped posting. <laughs> so, um, yeah, I was going so viral, dude. Like every single day, my videos were getting millions and millions of views. Like one time I ran into this NBA player. Um, I forget his name. He's, he was like a rookie recently. He grew up in the Bahamas, but now he's an NBA player. I forget this guy's name. I'm so sorry, dude. But, um, he was like, this like superstar rookie player. He's still like a big, big player in the league. I ran into him in an elevator one time. And I was like, hey, what's up, bro? And he's just like, yeah, what's, what's good? And then um, he was just like, I know you. You're always on my explore page. I know exactly who you are. I'm like, what? Dude, I was going so viral every day. I, I found this fucking loophole hack. When Instagram launched IGTV, um, they were like pushing IGTV content so heavy because they were trying to like, in the For You page, they always had this one huge grid that was just IGTVs. So they were trying to push it so hard. And you needed, I think you had to make a minute long video to, to even post to IGTV. A lot of people didn't have minute long videos because they ain't talented enough to do something good for over a minute, right? <laughs> Especially in their sex life as well. I could relate. Um, so, but I was like, ha ha, here's my opportunity. So I got all my viral videos, just turned them into a compilation. It was like, a 12 or 13 minute compilation of me just doing the dumbest shit, holding up traffic in New York, you know, juggling my soccer ball, kicking the ball off a building, jumping in the fucking Hudson River, uh, you know, kicking the ball at like random people, um, just like, just crazy, just wild shit, bro. I never kicked it at anybody uh, except for like guys that would fight me, right? So I didn't take it out on el the elderly or women or anything like that, don't worry. Um, <laughs> so anyway, I made this fucking IGTV that was like 12 minutes long. And I just posted it, dude, fucking viral. Like I'm talking like within a day, it had like 2 million views, 3 million views. I was like, holy shit, they got so much engagement. My followers were just going crazy. Like every second I refreshed my Instagram, it was just like 100 followers, 50 followers, 80 followers. It was ridiculous. Um, anyway, after like a day or two, the views kind of fizzled out like two, three million. So I was like, fuck it. I'll just post the same exact video again, the same compilation. Bro, boom, 5 million views. And I literally just for like a month, I just posted the same exact video every single day <laughs> on IGTV. And I went from like, I ran up my Instagram from like 30 or 40K to like half a million followers, bro. I swear to you, it was, I don't know the exact timeline. It probably was like six months, but I just posted this fucking compilation every day. And every day it was good because people were getting triggered in the comments. like. How, look at this guy like blocking traffic. Like what if someone was about to die? He like blocked traffic for 10 seconds. They could have died in that 10 seconds that they didn't get to the hospital. I'm like, dude, it was a pizza delivery guy on the street. Like someone just had to wait 10 more seconds to get a pizza. Like relax, I'm not fucking blocking an ambulance. Like, <laughs> but uh, yeah, so that's kind of what I was doing, right? So just doing soccer shit. I was getting all these brand deals. I had the blue hair. Life was good. You know, I had the cloud clouded up. Everyone kind of, I was getting recognized a lot in New York when I would be out, especially if I had my ball. If I had my ball, cause it was like blue hair or a soccer ball. It was like, dude, this is the guy that is going viral on my phone doing all the dumb shit. So almost every day I would get recognized multiple times in New York. And honestly, it was weird, bro. I don't, Honestly, I, it's so stupid because I'm making a podcast with the intention of getting a lot of views at, at one point. Hopefully it will be popular, right? I wouldn't make this podcast if I didn't think people will watch it, but I'm here. I am saying I don't really want to be recognized, but it's just kind of weird, man. When people recognize you in public, it's, um, 
it actually gives you kind of anxiety a little bit because, you know, I don't know, I'm a regular guy. If someone says, yo, what's up, Daniel? I'm like, hey, what's up, dude? I wanna like shake your hand or say, hey, what's up? Or like, oh, what's your name or whatever. But you kind of, imagine you meet like, if you run into like, I don't know, like Justin Bieber or something. Like if you're like, yo, Justin, can I get a pic? You're not expecting him to be like, oh, what's up, bro? Like, what's your name? Oh, what do you do? Like, the, no, you're just like, you expect them to lean in, get the selfie, and then they just keep walking. So that's what people expect to, with you, even if you're nowhere near as famous as a celebrity, but they just think, oh, I'm just gonna ask this guy for a pic. So people would just be like, yo, Dan, Daniel got his. Let me get a picture. It's like, you know, there's a lot of like kids that knew about soccer and shit, like teenagers in New York, and they would just get a pic, and they would just walk away instantly. And I'd be like, damn. Uh, before I even like adapt them up or like say anything, and it's kind of weird to me socially. And so, especially if there's people with you, um, like one time my mom came to visit, and like it was weird because then she was like, "Oh my God, my son is like, like turning into like a famous person." But it's like not really because I still live in a fucking two bedroom apartment, roommate like sharing, you know, with my friend as my roommate, like in fucking Bushwick, like no money in the bank whatsoever. But it's like all of a sudden people start thinking you're like, you know, going to be like famous or something. And it just puts this weird strain. It's just like you're, you're hanging out with your friends. They're treating you normal. Then some random person comes up. Oh, my God. Yo, damn, got this. Yo, just, yo, you're fucking lit, bro. Let me get a picture. And then they just walk away. And now you're just sitting there with your same friends. And it's like hard to just kind of get back in a conversation without this weird energy of like. Oh, like, does Daniel think he's better than us? Or like, he's getting recognized, I'm not. Like, it's just weird, bro. So anyway, I don't know, it's, it's overrated. But getting recognized is overrated, in my opinion. Um, but yeah, it is nice to also, I don't mean to be ungrateful. It is very nice that when people do come up and say that they love your videos, or that you made them laugh or whatever. So in that way, it is good. Um, but I just feel like the soccer thing, kind of running out of steam with it. Like I'm, you know, I'm getting older. I've had two knee surgeries now. So that was tricky as well. One from playing basketball, one from doing soccer shit. And uh, I'm good now, I feel healthy. I could do all the shit I was doing almost, but um, it just kind of set that alarm off in my head of like, okay, this thing has like a shelf life. You're not gonna be 55 doing soccer tricks with blue hair. Like, you know, maybe I would, I don't know. That would be pretty viral. Um, but I just started to feel like I was just going through the motions with it. And like, it was less like I want to do this every day. Like it was at the start. I was so excited to wake up every day with my friend, Michael videographer, you know, being my videographer and like just getting out there in New York and just shooting content, content, content with the ball. That was like so exciting to me. And the thought of like going viral, doing all these cool videos. Um, but it started to feel recently more like I have to do it or I should do it. Not like I really want to do it, you know? And when I start to feel like that with stuff, it starts to signal to me that that's sort of coming to the end of that chapter. And a lot of times people, this is why it's kind of, it looks sad when these old like ex rock stars are like, they're like 60 and they're still trying to wear like tight leather jeans and they have like the long hair and they just look like real old and shit. You're just like, bro, like, could you not just kind of, you know, move along with the flow of life? And like, you really want me doing this? Like, really? I don't know. It's just like, why don't you just be a dad right now and chill and like you have enough money. Why are you chasing this clout, chasing this relevance? And um, I always want to do stuff I'm passionate about. And once, once it starts feeling like a chore, like I have to make this content or I have to go out with my soccer ball today, I have to have blue hair. It became like I was like a caricature. I created like a caricature of myself and I uh, started realizing I was getting myself trapped in that vortex of like, Oh my God, like what if I don't have blue hair? Will people still like me? Oh my God, what if I don't do something soccer related? And uh, you know, I still wanna do video, I, I wanna do soccer videos, I wanna do shit, but only when I want to. I don't wanna feel like I have to. So because of that, I decided to do this midlife crisis podcast. Um, so now I have to do this instead. <laughs> so yeah, you know, you're always gonna have to do something, but you know, something new. This is at least exciting to me. I was pretty excited today to do this. I'm like, yo, fuck it. Let's run this shit. Let me get the lights set up. Let's get the, the set going and just talk some shit about whatever I want to talk about. And maybe people will, will fucks with it. Um, I just realized I should have been, you know, having some sort of timer or something going. So I know how long I'm going, but it's all good. I'll, I'll do as long as I feel like. Um, so, yeah, so that's what I'm doing right now. Um, I feel like this is something I can actually scale. It's something that's actually sustainable. And I feel like I won't get burned out doing this because I love talking. My dad's from Ireland. I fucking talk, 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 talk. When I was a kid, all my family used to say like, bro, this kid does not shut the fuck up. I remember one time my uncle was driving somewhere and I was just talking, 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 talking. And I probably was like seven, eight. And he was like, yo, I'll give you 10 bucks if you cannot talk for 30 minutes. And he wasn't being mean. He was just kind of like making it like a joke. 
because my other uncle was in the in the passenger seat, and um, they said I went for like a minute, and I was just like, mm, can, I, can I say one thing, one thing? Like, <laughs> so I would like talk fucking nonstop. So if I could somehow figure out a way to get some sort of like revenue from talking, that's literally like my fucking dream life. Like that's like jackpot shit. So we'll see. I'm not really worried about the money. I'm not doing this for money, like for any immediate money. I would like it to be successful at some point. Obviously, if you get a lot of viewers and you get a good podcast going, I'm sure there's opportunities for revenue. But as of right now, I'm just doing it for fun because I think it's something cool and hopefully people fucks with it. So, all right, what, what do I have going on here? Um, yeah, so why I'm feeling at a crossroads, don't want to be a caricature. I feel like I'm in fucking therapy right now. Uh, so yeah, I'm in LA, guys. I've been living in LA. Um, uh, so since the start of COVID, start of COVID, I was in New York and I just fucking just got so sick of it, dude. Like the whole COVID thing, you guys know my stance on that shit. I don't believe in nothing, none of it. Um, but you know, the COVID thing, well, I believe COVID was a real virus, you know, but I just believe you know, everything went really overboard in terms of the response. It was just ridiculous. Like I was living in New York, I'll go for walks. You're supposed to stay at home, stay home, stay safe. Never leave your fucking house. I was like, bro, I'm going to go for a walk every day. You guys want me to be a prisoner in my apartment? There's no problem walking outside. Are you guys fucking redacted? Okay. So I would go for walks and people would be like, opening their windows in their apartments and be like looking at me and be like, oh my God, how dare this guy be out for a walk? No mask, of course. So why would fuck would I wear a mask outside walking? Um, so I just, you know, New York is an amazing city. I love it so much. It's my favorite city still. Um, but in the winters in New York, it's pretty brutal. The way that you survive winter mentally in New York is you gotta go, you're, it's so cold outside, so if you're walking, you always wanna go in somewhere. You wanna go in to eat some ramen with a friend or have a couple drinks at the bar or like go to like a concert or go somewhere. You can't just be outside in December, January, February for more than like 10, 20 minutes. You're gonna be freezing. So when everything was shut and closed and you couldn't even go for a meal, you couldn't even go for a beer, it was like, why am I here? It's like, you just in your apartment all day. So I was like, okay, I'm going to go to LA at least the winter. The, the weather is like nicer. It'll be sunny. There's the beach. I could go to the beach. I can just be a little bit more free. I'll, uh, I'll finally learn how to drive. I was such a fucking late learner. I only learned how to drive like four, three years, four years ago. Like what the hell? When I decided I was going to go to LA, I was like, well, I better get a driver's license. So I went, I did that. Um, and so, yeah, I just, Felt like I'd have more freedom as long as the pandemic stuff kind of raged on. Um, but yeah, so now I've been, I just kind of like never went back. Um, I just stayed here. I was living in West Hollywood, which is a demonic uh, cesspool of society. Um, now there's some cool people there, but not, it's like, it's not really my vibe. It was so dystopian. Like, it's just like all these homeless tents and then like, you know, the LGBTQ capital of the world that's like a lot of like really high earning LGBTQ population and then like all these homeless people. It's just the weirdest juxtaposition. It's just so bizarre. It's like really like just the weirdest clash of, uh, you know, societal everything. So I didn't really like it, especially cause they were like super, super, super extra hardcore liberal with COVID stuff too. Um, same thing, I'd be like working out at a park by myself and people would be like jogging past with like double masks, like looking at me like I'm the crazy one. But anyway, um, you know, had that whole thing's kind of over now. Hopefully it stays over for the rest of my life. Um, but now I live in, in LA in a cool part of LA. It's chill, um, you know, pretty happy. I got fucking uh, engaged. I got engaged. Okay. This episode is brought to you by myself because I don't have any sponsors yet. So if you want to sponsor this shit, hit me up. Okay. so. This is crazy, right? Wedding rings, like guys, we do not know what the fuck we're doing with wedding, wedding rings. Like there needs to be a, a course in school to fucking teach guys how to get a, an engagement ring. This was insane, bro. All right, so I had a trip booked to Paris with my girlfriend and then I was gonna go visit my family in Ireland. So I was like, all right, let's go to Paris for you know like a week, then we'll go to Ireland, visit family, and then we'll come back, right? So about a month away from this Paris trip, hmm, Decaf, by the way, decaf. Um, about a month away from this Paris trip, I decided, you know what? I love my girl. She's the one. I'm a fucking propose. YOLO. Let's do it. And I was so dumb. I thought like, oh, you could just, um, you could just go to like a store and just buy a ring. I'll just have a ring tomorrow. <laughs> you know, I was like so dumb. And uh, I started looking into it. And then like everywhere I look, it's like, yeah, you can't just like buy one. You have to like order it, like what size is the finger? What type of diamond? Do you want a real diamond or a lab diamond? 
Do you want how many carats? Do you want a circular diamond, a rectangular, oval? Like what kind of cut? What kind of band do you want? Do you want white gold, rose gold, uh, normal gold, yellow gold? Like, it, oh my God, bro. It's like actually a whole fucking thing. So I just, I instantly just start going like, ah, oh, here we go, dude. I could feel my you know, stress levels slowly rising, which is annoying because I was so looking forward to the trip. I was like, oh man, the next month's going to be so chill. I'm just, you know, hanging out before we go to Europe. It's going to be awesome. And then as soon as I decided to buy the ring, it just became like, oh my God, oh my God, the next month's going to be hell. Will I get this ring in time? What the fuck? What if it doesn't come in time? I just wasted a perfect opportunity to propose in Paris, the dream proposal, blah, 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 blah. And I just became so stressed out, right? So anyway, I'm looking online, all these fucking rings, bro. We are in the wrong business. Everyone watching this, we are in the wrong business, okay? The wedding ring business is, they have it figured out, bro, okay? Uh, these fucking jewelers, they have it figured out. Like, that's the business you want to be in. Every, nobody knows what they're buying. Everyone is under pressure to get a good, you know, a good size ring or like a, you know, a nice ring. Um, you, it's just price sensitivity is just fucking non-existent. Like, if someone just said... I'll have something that will just solve this problem for you and your girl's gonna love it and I'll just have it ready for you like tomorrow. I would have just given them like everything I own. It's like, take it, just take it. Just give me something good. Just give me the fucking ring. And let me have it in my possession. <laughs> I felt like fucking Gollum. Just give me the ring. Um, so I'm doing research and you know, these rings are fucking expensive. I'm dropping like a substantial amount for me, for me, like a substantial amount. I'm like, oh, holy shit. Okay, here we go. Um, and I saw these people on the internet being like, Etsy, go on Etsy. Etsy has the best prices. And I, you know, I go on Etsy and they have a point. All the jewelers on Etsy, they do have some really good prices. You're kind of cutting out the middleman. You're just going straight to these jewelers. But the thing is you got to buy it on Etsy and they're shit. They're all in New York, right? In the diamond district. So they got to ship it from New York. And, um, so I'm like, okay, cool. So I fucking, you know, figure out what kind of ring I want. I order it with the jeweler. Um, and then I fucking, he's like, I'm like, bro, I need this within the next like 27 days like it has to be here it has to has to has to has to be here he's like yeah, yeah i got you no problem um so i fucking pay the thing on etsy first problem comes up straight away because i made a new account on etsy to buy that and uh because it was a su substantial amount i guess for a new account i don't know whatever the payment got like stuck like pending uh it didn't clear so etsy had the payment in review and anyone that's watching this right now you guys know how fucking stressful it is if an important fucking item is just like in these like pending stages and shit, it's like, oh my God. So I was literally, bro, I was almost having a heart attack. So I'm like, it's a review. So I'm like waiting, waiting, waiting. They say, there's nothing we could do. It takes seven days to go through review. I talked to the jeweler. I'm like, bro, just cancel it. And then I'll just pay you separate. Uh, he had a website. I'll just, I'll pay you on your website. Just cancel this shit. And he's like showing me screenshots. He's like, it won't let me cancel. I'm like, fuck, it won't let me cancel either. So I could feel myself just fucking losing hair, bro. Like literally just feeling this anxiety like oh shit it's pending my girl can see that i'm stressed out she thinks there's like something wrong i'm like no but i don't want to ruin the surprise that's just like the worst vibe ever um so anyway seven days later the fuck and he's like i can't start making the ring till i get the payment because i don't want to start making your ring which is custom and then i don't get the payment and then he already spent all the money on the materials so i understand seven days goes past the fucking payment clears I'm like, oh my God, thank God, thank God. Boom, boom, all right? So about a week and a half later, he goes, yo, the ring's ready, I'm shipping it to you, okay? So he ships me the ring. It takes like another five days or something to arrive. At this point, I'm leaving in like a week. But I'm like happy, I, I wake up, and I get the notification that um, that it's out for delivery. I'm like, oh my God, thank God, thank God, thank God, thank God, thank God, thank God, I can like finally relax now. This ring has been like a whole thing. I get the ring, I'm so excited. Fucking open it, open the package, bro. The ring was smaller than advertised, but like substantially, like it was way smaller than it should have been. And I see what he did. He kind of tricked me and he said, it's this many carrots, but they were including carrots in the actual circular like band in the ring part, not the big, big diamond on the top. He was kind of including the carrots on everything. And it was only written all the way down in the description at the very, very bottom, this huge description. And at the very bottom, it was like, the carrot size in the title is not the main stone. It's the, all of the carrots in the ring. Blah, blah, blah. The main stone is this. And it was like 40% smaller. I was like, bro, I can't believe that this is like, you know, an issue to me, but I just wanted my girl to have a good ring. I, I, I'm going to have to look at this ring for the rest of my life. I don't want to feel like I skimped out on it or that a jeweler fucking tricked me or finessed me. So I was like, fuck this guy. 
I'm sending it back. So I saw in this thing on Etsy that he had um, he had like a 30 day return policy, no question, any reason, right? So, but I was like, if I say the real reason though, that might actually be one of the only ways that he doesn't have to refund me because if I say, oh, it wasn't the right amount, the right size, he could actually show the description and say, no, it was. And so even though he said any reason, that might not be a valid any reason. So I just said, I didn't like it because how can you argue with that? I don't like it. I didn't like it. I just didn't like it. She didn't like it. I didn't like it. <laughs> you can't argue with that. So, but I know these New York jewelers, bro. It's like New York landlords. They're fucking shysty. They're clever. They're smart. They all have 10 multiple addresses and mailboxes. You can't pin them down. I was afraid that if I messaged him and I was like, hey, I want to return it, that he would give me some runaround and be like, oh, you can't send it back right now. We're like moving offices or like we need to wait like this. He would try to finesse me. So what I did is I didn't even tell him I was sending it back. And I just saw the return address that was on the FedEx box. And I went to FedEx and said, send this back to this address. And I just sent it back to his address, signature required, without telling him. So he was just gonna receive a box. You know, he's probably like, okay, great. It's something I need for my business that I ordered. And he signed for it. Like who won't sign for a FedEx if you send someone a FedEx, right? Um, so like two days later, I get the notification, delivered, signed for, and I was like, got him. So then I fucking sent him a message on Etsy. Hey, thanks for accepting my return. Ha 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 ha, you guys see that's a good negotiation right there. Thanks for accepting my return. I attached a screenshot, you know, signed for this morning. Um, I just didn't like the ring. My girlfriend didn't like it, uh, but thanks a lot. Just let me know when you can process the refund. And uh, the good thing is like Etsy and like Airbnb, all these kind of platform like marketplaces, they're always gonna side with you as the customer, especially if the person says that they have any reason return policy. So I knew he was kind of screwed because you know, it's on Etsy. So if they, you know, don't like how he's treating the customer, they could give him a strike and all this shit. So he actually gave me the, the, um, the refund straight away. But then I was like, shit, now I got to go to Paris in like seven days and I still don't have a ring. And then I just like got my act together and went to a real physical store jeweler, you know, got a great uh, ring. She fucking loved it. And the, the business was amazing. Also, I really liked them. They were like the first ever good, genuine like jeweler that I've interacted with at least and they were like freaking awesome so it worked out perfect did the whole proposal video in Paris mm. you know I'm not really a romantic guy but I was like fuck it for this one thing I'll just do the most romantic thing I could possibly think of rooftop in Paris Eiffel Tower background propose do the you know do the thing boom so that's done so yeah engaged um and yeah, it was, it was cool, man. It's cool being engaged. It's crazy. I would never have thought I'd be, if you asked me like four years ago, like, Hey, you're going to be engaged in 2023. I'd be like, bro, no way. But, um, yeah, freaking love my girl to death. Happy. I did it. You know, Europe's so much happier than America, bro. Like we're sitting there in Paris and like, we would just be like, okay, let's go to this, um, you know, cafe restaurant for dinner at like 5 PM or six. And it would be like a really nice busy street. Like all these people walking down the street, really well dressed. A lot of everyone chilling outside, everyone, you know, sipping like espressos and like kind of smoking cigarettes. Not that I like smoking cigarettes, but it's just like a social vibe. Everyone just outside. We would just find like some cool cafe on like a street corner and just post up there and just sit there for like three hours, like have dinner, then have a glass of wine, then have like some little dessert, then have like another glass of wine. I had my um, book, my girlfriend had her like book, she was reading Harry Potter and we're just chilling there. And like the, the wait staff, like they don't move you along. They don't expect a tip. They don't, it's just completely chill. Everyone just sits there for hours and hours and it's like, just people watching. Everyone's walking around on the streets. Everyone's kind of fit. Everyone's healthy. Nobody's obese. And I'm just like, bro, I think we don't have enough community in America. Like in America, you know, the biggest sense of community is people driving like half a block to Dunkin' Donuts and just getting like some fucking iced coffee with 7,000 calories. Um, I don't know. I just think the, the older I get, I don't know if the American lifestyle is something I want to do for the rest of my life. Like Europeans are so much happier, even though they're all like broke as fuck. They don't do shit. They don't invent shit. They don't make anything cool. Like they're just like inferior in every single way, but they are happier. So who's really winning? <laughs> the European mind can't comprehend this. Um, so I don't know, but I am sick of all those posts where it's like, um, I was in Italy for like two weeks and I, I fucking, I ate everything I normally eat, but I lost 10 pounds. It's like, yeah, bro, you were fucking walking all day instead of being like a fat slob back at home where like I said, you drive half a fucking block to the gym 
and then drive half a block to Starbucks, drive half a block to the fucking, you know, 7-Eleven just to get like a snack. Like the driving lifestyle, that's why New York is actually in a way like still just my favorite city in America because you could just walk. You don't need a car. You walk everywhere, get the subway. Now that the subway became like fucking, you know, the Joker movie, like you don't really necessarily want to be in the subway that much anymore. You get fucking stabbed by some random guy who's out like 58 times on parole. Um, you know, but before COVID, it was it was still relatively safe. I never felt unsafe on the subway. Um, you know, it's just awesome. Like you could walk around. I do think that something small like that, it contributes so much to your mental health and to your overall contentment and your happiness, being able to walk. So that's something when I moved recently, um, I really took it into account when looking for apartments. Like I wanted to rent somewhere that I could walk to the store. And it sounds so simple. When you live in Europe, the European mind can't comprehend this. When you live in Europe, <laughs> you, you can always walk somewhere damn near, unless you live in the countryside. In America, if you live in LA, when, when Europeans think like LA, Las Vegas, you know, um, Miami, Houston, like these, like Chicago, you can't always walk to somewhere. You can in New York, right? But almost everywhere else, you might need to drive to get a coffee, drive to get a loaf of bread or some milk or whatever. My dad went to get milk like 20 years ago. He still didn't come back. I don't know where he is, but if he could have walked there instead of driving, he'd have been back by now. So I'm, he's going to come back. Um, so <laughs> like, that was a big factor. I think we need to think of things differently now in terms of what makes you happy, right? I thought it would make me happy to have this live in a house with a bunch of space, like with an ocean view and shit. And I did that when I made some money from the bull market and I was miserable. I overspent on rent. I was fucking stressed every day. I had this nice view, but I didn't have any friends around. I couldn't walk to the store. And it was like this mirage where it's like, we're get a big car, get a big house, get everything. You're gonna be happy. You will not be happy. So I started really, really like honing in. What makes me happy? It makes me happy to be able to walk to get uh, a coffee, walk to the store, walk to a local park. I have a park near me. I could play soccer. I could play basketball. I could go for a run. Little things like that, dude, it makes you so much happier. And that's why, you know, other countries, they're just happier. The McMansion suburb lifestyle of having to drive your Escalade everywhere, even to get fucking milk or get coffee or go for a walk. You have to, in America, you have to drive to go for a walk. Like it's the only country where you have to literally fucking drive to go for a walk. Like you can't just walk around. People will be like, yeah, we're going to drive over here and then go for a walk. It's like, dude, but I get it because if you just walk outside your apartment or your house, it might just be a fucking freeway. You can't really walk there. So anyway, there's a lot of negatives about America. I'm not really sure. There's a lot of positives too, but um, I'm really contemplating as I get older, like what's really the things that makes me happy. Um, and you know, little things like that, being able to walk, you could just walk outside of your house and go somewhere. It's so awesome. We're living near friends. That's a huge one. I moved far away from all my friends and, um, Dude, that it was real. Like that, they say that loneliness is a cause of like early death. You don't have that sense of community. That's why old people, when they just, you know, you go to like Croatia or something, and all the dudes and the old ladies, they'll just be chilling. Or Italy, they'll just be chilling on the fucking side of the street, you know, in a little cafe for hours and hours a day, and they're just talking shit, or they're playing like you know chess, or they're just talking about like the soccer game or whatever. It, that's literally the healthiest thing you can do. Just have a group of people around that you enjoy vibing with or like longtime friends that you have a great longtime connection with. That's better than any money. The money cannot buy that. Having a short commute, things like that. Um, yeah, so dude, America's fucked. Like I saw this thing, Dunkin' Donuts the other day. Speaking of Dunkin' Donuts, they launched this thing like spiked coffee or something. Was it like Dunkin' Donuts spiked coffees? Like, look at this shit. Dunkin' introduces new spiked iced coffees and iced teas. Dunkin' Ice Spiked Coffee has an alcoholic uh, ABV of 6%. Bro, 6%. That's how fucked up America is that we need to be drunk, <laughs> high, and caffeinated just to function. Like every other country, you're going to do one maybe at a certain time. Like you might be caffeinated in the morning. You might get a little drunk in, at night. Maybe on the weekend, they'll take a hit of some weed or whatever. Get a little high. Get a little, you know, baked. But... In America, we gotta do all three, same time. We gotta be high, drunk, and caffeinated just to function in this fucking society. That's how like unhealthy America is, <laughs> bro. Spiked coffee, like once again, the European mind cannot comprehend this. Um, but yeah, what else, what else? Let me take a sip of this shit. Mm -hmm. Dude, LA rich people, I said this on Twitter the other day, LA rich people are the worst fucking rich people. That's the one thing about LA that I just, 
it's hard for me to get on board with. It's just like the people here, they're so stuck up, a lot of them, not the locals, don't get me wrong, like the fucking LA locals, like middle class, or just people that are not like fucking millionaires or shit, they're, they're super chill. But like the rich people, the bougie people in LA are the worst type, okay? In New York, there was rich people, but they were often like these kind of like brash, like fucking blunt, almost like Donald Trump type shit, like some rich guy on Wall Street, like you'll say some shit and they'll just make like a, a fucked up joke or they'll be like really blunt. They'll kind of just tell you what they think to your face. In LA, like the rich people, they all wear sunglasses. They have like this like hair, the flowy hair and they go to Erewhon and like they, they make you feel like you're being cringe if you're just like, if you're polite or friendly. If you're like, hey, how's it going? They're just like, ew, like he tried to talk to someone like, ew. Does he even know them? Like, it's so, bro, I fucking hate LA rich people. They're so, they're like the most vapid, like superficial, they all drive like these fucking Porsche McCann's or whatever the fuck that is, or like G-Wagons, but like they have no personality, zero. They hop out of their G-Wagon and they have like the perfect hair and like these like, you know, what, what's that, what's that fucking brand like Loro Piana or whatever, that fucking bougie ass brand. They're just wearing all these brands and like, they always have shades on and like they're like afraid of even talking to like anybody. They're just in their own fucking bubble. They they think it's like not cool to smile. If you smile, you're fucking you're you're like a loser. That's how LA is. It's like if you smile, you're a fucking loser. Why are you smiling? The whole thing you gotta do is be like, you gotta be like real like give them the like chill, like nonchalant sort of like look of like, you know, I don't really care about anything, like Life is so chill, like, I don't ever smile. Like, smiling is, like, so low status, bro. Like, you just kind of got to chill and just, like, you know, go to Erewhon and, like, why would you talk to a stranger? Like, don't ever say good morning or don't ever say anything. So, anyway, the rich people in L.A., bro, they're so fucking annoying. They're the worst type of rich people. Absolute worst. Absolute worst. Um, and, yeah, I don't know. I just think, I don't know if I can see myself fully staying in LA for a long time. Although, it's so stupid because I say, like, I don't see myself staying. But then on the flip side... I'm like so weird though. I'm literally getting my real estate license. How fucking weird is that guys? I'm getting my real estate license in the state of California, um, which is kind of weird if I think I wouldn't stay here. Why would I do that? Right. But uh, like I said, midlife crisis, podcast, mustache, uh, mullet, real estate license. Like these are all a classic millennial midlife crisis situations going on. So the way I look at it is like if at least one of them takes off, that's cool. Just I'm just throwing shit at the wall, see what sticks. So uh, podcast, uh, soccer, real estate, like. But I do, I do really like real estate. Um, it's interesting. Like it's fascinating to me how in America you can just look up the owner of any property. You can look up the owner of any fucking house. Like you could just. I don't even want to say the websites where you can do it because I don't want to promote this like activity, but even just Google yourself and Google your name right now, especially if you have a kind of unique name, your address will fucking pop up on Google. I hate this shit. Why do we have this thing called public record in America? I absolutely hate it. No other country has this. I've lived in multiple countries. If anyone from those countries was, if you told them, Hey, your address, your name and your phone number is going to be right on Google. If anyone searches for you, they would be like, that is appalling. They would never allow that. But in America, everyone's like, yeah, this is called public record, duh. Like it's public record, it's public record. Why are you defending this? Stop defending this, it's not good. Like we should not have people just being doxxed, especially people who have unique names and shit like that. Uh, like Elon Musk's kids, like they're gonna be fucked. Their address is gonna be everywhere. Um, well, no, he's obviously gonna figure out some way to keep it off. But um, I just hate it. It's like all these companies selling your data, you know, they just, they basically prey on people. They sell your data, they sell your name, they sell your address. And um, it's just fucking weird. You look up shit online, there's a lot of people have to move constantly because they have like a stalker or because, you know, weird shit, ex-girlfriend, ex-boyfriend, um, celebrities like Taylor Swift or something, like some dude kept finding her address and breaking into her house. It's fucking bizarre, bro. No one's name and address should be on the internet. So if I was president, 2028, Daniel got his DGH for president. My slogan, like I said before, my slogan would be mind your business, okay? And this, this feeds perfectly into mind your business. Get everyone's fucking names and addresses and phone numbers off the internet. Look at all these fucking SIM swaps. Oh my God, these SIM swaps are crazy in crypto NFTs, bro. You know, if people find your phone number, they can basically bribe a, a T-Mobile or Verizon employee and they swap your SIM without needing to do it with the physical SIM card. They just do it over the phone and they just basically steal your number to their phone and then they can like log into your Twitter, they can log into your bank accounts, all that kind of shit. And uh, every single day someone's getting SIM swapped 
um, on the internet. And so when people are like, what's the problem? Like public record, public record. It's like, yeah, if someone looks up, you know, Vitalik, well, he's Canadian, but you get the point. Some, some really, you know, successful American entrepreneur, something like that. Uh, people have been able to find Mark Cuban's number uh, on YouTube. There's this guy that just called Mark Cuban from his fucking Google number. And it's literally Mark Cuban. And uh, so like if someone finds that, they could literally just pay someone off, try to SIM swap Mark Cuban, get gain access to his Twitter by saying, forgot password, then it texts you that one-time code. So now if you control Mark Cuban's number, you get that one-time code, you log in, you change his fucking password on Twitter, and all of a sudden they could tweet out anything like, yo, get my NFT, I just dropped this Dallas Mavericks NFT, people think it's really Mark Cuban, they connect their wallet, everyone loses all their fucking money, all their crypto, you know, board apes down the drain. And uh, so I just think that's a huge problem. I really hate the, the public record thing. I, I petition, we get rid of public record. There should be no reason anyone needs to know your fucking address or your phone number or anything. Oh, but it's, what about the white pages? That used to, okay, if you need someone's number, then ask them for their number. And if you don't have a way of contacting them for their number to ask for their number, well then maybe they don't fucking wanna hear from you. You need to like, if you don't know someone that knows them, like why are you reaching out to them anyway? Find their email, find something less invasive. Fucking DM them on social media. You don't need to know their fucking address or their number. Anyway, I don't know, piss me off. But um, yeah, guys, that's pretty much it, man. That pretty much covered everything that I have written down. So I think I'll just, you know, end it with that. Let's see if that could be a, a good first podcast. Um, redacted, episode one. Daniel got his, they're gonna look back. You know, historians are gonna look back on this episode as the start of a new era. You know, the fall of the American civilization, the American empire, the fall of the Roman empire, you know, that's happening right now. This is like the Renaissance. I'm the Phoenix rising from the ashes to save us from this collapsing economy, this collapsing world. And this episode right here will literally, they're going to look back on it. Like in the graphs, they'll be like, this is like when j Powell stopped raising interest, uh, raising interest rates. They stopped hiking right now. This is like the bottom. Okay. From here is up only. Um, we're going to get RFK into the white house and then we just up only and that's it. <laughs> so yeah, thanks for tuning in guys. Um, dude, drop a comment, please. I would love to hear from people. What do you guys think about this format? What should I talk about? Should I get guests? Should I not get guests? Should I just keep ranting about shit? Let me know what you guys think. Drop a motherfucking comment. Feel free to like, you know, spread the word. I feel like word of mouth is going to be important for this podcast if it's going to take off. Um, but yeah, I would love to get some suggestions from you guys, what I should talk about or what you found good, what you found bad. Um, yeah, drop a comment. I'll reply to all of them. Probably throw this on Twitter as well. X fucking call. Who the fuck calls it X, bro? You're literally a fed. If you call it X, nobody normal calls it X. It's literally Twitter. I'm never going to call it X. Um, but I'll throw that on there to see if I can get some good engagement, you know, maybe use Elon Musk's own need for Twitter clout against them. Be like, I uploaded my podcast on X. Um, this is the future for creators. We get so much more reach at Elon Musk. And then he might just retweet it to be like, look, podcasters should be on this. We'll see if this plays out. You guys will notice that I'm a social media genius. So we'll see. I might even try this and we'll test it out. Um, yeah, <laughs> what's up boys. Take care. See you guys next one. I'm probably going to do one, one a week. Maybe, maybe two a week. I don't know. We'll fucking see. But I'll definitely at least one a week, I think. I just got to get my girlfriend out of the fucking apartment so I can make these without, you know, her like overhearing it and then being like, bro, what, what, why am I with this guy? Like, he's a fucking, like, the weirdest dude ever. Well, he doesn't talk about this shit with me. Like, you know what? Girls will get upset if you talk about stuff with other people, but you don't talk. Oh, you never told me that you don't like public record and people's addresses be on Google. <laughs> it's like, why would I tell you that? Um, but that's a bad example because I do talk to her about that. <laughs> but anyway, you guys get it. Peace out. Laters. Stay redacted.